The first project I made on the new printer was this. New crash barrier with this cool little fence on top. So let's get into where to find the files, some tips on printing it, and of course, how great they look on the track. First of all, I just want to give a shout out to Mr. Flippant, who created these files. Mr. Flippant, AKA Greg Gobb, AKA the host of the Worldwide Slot Car Chat. I'm sure many of you have run into him on Slot Car Forum as Mr. Flippant. And if you've watched any of the Worldwide Slot Car Chat sessions, then you know exactly who I'm talking about. The original file was created by him, but there was a remix to the actual wall piece that added a dovetail just to the end here. It helps connect two pieces together, which helps a lot with installing on the track and then also the overall visual appeal. All of the files for this project can be found on Thingiverse. And just wanted to give a big shout out to Mr. Flippant and OXO Cube for providing these free of charge to the community. I downloaded the Crash Wall 2 from OXO Cube, the Fence V3 from Mr. Flippant, and the Clips for Carrera Track also from Mr. Flippant. This combo should work for most people, but if you happen to have a different manufacturer of track, Mr. Flippin also provided clips for Polycar and Scale Electric. When I imported these files to my slicer software, I had to reorient two of the files, and on the third, you have to adjust a few of the slicer settings to get it to print right. First, the clips need to be laid flat on their side on the print bed. This allows the weakest point, which is where the layer lines are, to be oriented in a way that gets the least amount of stress when a car crashes into that wall. Next, the walls need to be oriented standing straight up. I've tried many other orientations just to speed up the print time, but all the little fiddly bits like the holes and the dovetails don't print very accurately when they lay on their side. So just make sure to stand them up, but when you do, add a brim to the outside so that it stays standing up throughout the whole print process. Last change I need to make was to the slicer settings for the fence. Technically, this model is three different parts, one for the bars and one each for both of the chain link fence parts. In order to print it to look like chain link fence, you have to remove the top layer and the bottom layer. So you trick the software into not printing those layers and then adding an infill that looks like chain link fence. Each slicer software has different infill patterns, so pick the one that fits the best and looks the most realistic. After all that, the files can be sent to the printer and we are off to the races. And by races, I mean staring at the printer for hours on end while these things print. They're not the longest print I've ever done, but they're not very fast either. So take your time, but through the magic of video editing, we're gonna skip to the good part. As you can see, the piece is printed out crisp and clean and installation is super simple. First, you take a clip and add it to the bottom hole of the wall. Then you lift the track a bit, slide that clip underneath and push the track back down. Once it's secured to the track, you just slide the fence right in those holes on the top. After all installed, they looked a little plain with all that white. So I reprinted some of the ad boards I used on my previous walls and they stuck straight to it and look absolutely fantastic. These models are a perfect addition to my slot car track. They add extreme functionality and are a significant visual upgrade from the poster board crash barriers I was using previously. The best part is they're easily removable. So if and when a redesign of the layout happens, they can be reinstalled on the new track without any changes. As you might've seen in the last video and some sneak peeks in this one, I have a lot of other models that I've added to the track already. And I'm curious to know, would you guys like to see each model as an individual video, much like this one? Or would you rather see broad overviews or layout updates as we go along? Let me know in the comments what you think. I appreciate you all sticking around to the very bitter end, but I have a little announcement. We have reached, at the time of recording this video, we have reached 450 subscribers and it's climbing every day. I wanna reach out and say thank you to each and every one of you. Thank you and we'll see you next time.